Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. I hope you guys are having a great time. To anyone new here, a warm welcome. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. All I ask is after watching and or listening to the video, if you find you enjoyed it or you learned something, do me a favor, smash that like button and consider subscribing. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to Monday, Monday afternoon, maybe Tuesday, depending upon where you are. I'm going to talk a little bit about Madeline Soto today. In an interview on Telemundo, Madeline Soto's maternal grandmother shared some interesting details about her daughter, Jen. Her the grandmother, Jen did work Sunday, which is the day before Madeline disappeared and the night of Madeline's birthday party. The grandmother said Jen awoke tired on Monday morning and asked her boyfriend, Stefan Stearns, to bring Madeline to her. Now, this interview was in Spanish, so I hope that is an accurate translation. So what does she mean by bring her back to me? As in Stefan, go get Madeline and bring her back to me. The grandmother said that's the last we know. When asked if it was common for Stearns to pick Madeline up for school, the grandmother said, no, Jen always took Madeline. The grandmother said, quote, in the church footage, she's referring to the Peace Methodist Church, I believe, you can see a girl in a green sweater. She sits in the parking lot and waits, and it's later she gets up and she heads toward the school. That's the last we know of her. And every day that goes by is worse because one loses hope. After three days of her being gone, we don't know what else to do. I think someone took her. I want to jump in here. Guys, apparently the female in the green sweater in the security footage was not Madeline per law enforcement, so the grandmother has that wrong. The grandmother also stated that Madeline didn't like to sleep alone. Now, if that's true, you have to wonder if she, Jen, and Stefan ever shared a bed? Or did Maddie want to sleep with her mom for fear of Stefan Stearns creeping into her bedroom when she was alone? I also heard that Stefan Stearns had recently moved out of the condo and was living with his parents. Sounds like a failure to launch kind of guy. How and why did Madeline die? No one in the public knows yet what the manner and cause of death are. I think it's likely this is a case of murder. I say this because Madeline's body was dumped in a wooded area and her school laptop and her backpack were tossed by Stearns into a dumpster outside the condo where Jen and Madeline lived. According to the Mirror newspaper, the authorities believe Stearns did Maddie in in the early morning hours of Monday, February 26, and then put her body in his 2010 silver Lincoln MK sedan and propped her body up. That is how the authorities spotted Maddie in the car. Sounds like he was hoping that Madeline would look alive in the car. We know that Madeline's autopsy has been completed. However, it hasn't been released to the public. Why was Maddie killed is the big question. What motive would the perpetrator have to do this to an innocent 13-year-old? Obviously, only the person who did it and any possible co-conspirators know for certain at this point. Possible motives that are being bandied about include 1. Madeline being pregnant. This is pure speculation. 2. Could Madeline have threatened to tell what Stearns was doing to her? It's certainly a possibility. 3. Some people think that maybe Madeline's mother harmed her, out of anger perhaps, at Madeline being Stearns' essay victim, perhaps out of some sick and twisted sense of jealousy, maybe. 4. Jen did mention in an interview that Madeline had a crush on a guy at school. Could this have made Stephen Stearns jealous? Again, all of this is pure speculation. It will be interesting to see what law enforcement and the prosecutors say once an arrest is made and possibly at trial if there is one. There are some possible breadcrumbs out on Facebook and Reddit. One person who claims to have been friends with Jen Soto in 2022 wrote, 
wrote that they met on Bumble, BFF, when Jen was living in Orlando, Florida. This person said they're no longer friends with Jen because Stefan had taken himself off his psych meds and had threatened to unalive himself in front of Jen. This friend did not want to go to Jen's house until Stefan got help because he was always armed. This allegedly upset Jen and it led to an end of the friendship. That same person wrote that she'd only been to Jen's home once, but she believes Maddie had her own room, which would make sense since the house has four bedrooms. And apparently the master bedroom is on the first floor. That's interesting because it would have made it easier for Stearns, if he was a night creeper, to pad his way quietly upstairs and enter Maddie's bedroom. However, I'm not sure that Jen and Stefan slept downstairs. A friend of Stefan's who was on Grey Hughes said that when he went to visit Stefan, he was ushered upstairs to two bedrooms. One was Maddie's and one was Jen's, and I guess Stefan's. This same person on Facebook claimed that Jen was prescribed a huge dose of antipsychotic medication for her bipolar condition. Per the friend, Jen took all her meds for this at night, which would knock her out until the morning. Jen allegedly complained that the meds made it difficult to wake up. The friend then suggested that Jen take half the the meds in the morning and half at night. If this is true, it would explain how Stearns could have been able to essay Maddie and take photos of her without Jen knowing, if Jen really didn't know. But it's hard to know if all this information is true. But if it is, the detail about Stefan being armed might hint to how Madeline died. And it may also hint to Jen not wanting to admit Stearns had serious issues. Maddie's father's side of the family said that Madeline did not tell them. They said that if she had shared her essay, they would have believed her and they would have helped her. Apparently, Madeline's father and stepmother are staying quiet at this point to process all this along with their devastation. So the question is, did Madeline tell her mother? If so, did Jen bury her head in the sand? And if so, was it because she loved Stearns and didn't want to turn him in? There's also the possibility that Jen invited or asked or told Madeline to join her and Stefan if Stefan was asking her to do that. A lot of young victims keep their essay a secret out of shame. They may feel that they won't be believed after a period. They may feel that they are somehow complicit in the essay. This is especially true if they've been groomed over time. It's a shame because they don't see that it's not their fault. The abuser started this stuff, not them. It just kills me to think about what Maddie may have been carrying around with her in terms of her emotions when she should have been having fun with her friends crushing on boys at school and at the mall, going to movies, going out for pizza. That's the stuff I was doing at age 13. Stefan Stearns also allegedly posted on Reddit under the name Sustanet or Sustane. FYI, that word derives from a motto of the state of Connecticut, which is Qui trans tu li sustene. That's Latin. And I'm guessing on the pronunciation, it means he who is transplanted still sustains. And this is connected to the 80th Psalm of the Bible, which states, Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt, thou hast cast out the heathen, and planted it, end quote. Take that as you will. It's sort of creeping me out a little under the circumstances. I forgot to say earlier that, sadly, only about 38% of child victims disclose that they've been essayed. Many never tell anyone about it. And according to the Darkness to Light website, about one in 10 children will be essayed before their 18th birthday. That's effing infuriating. So this crap is more prevalent than you might think. I'm certain some of you, sadly, have experienced this. The website said about one in seven girls will be victimized and one in 25 boys as well before they turn 18. And each year, about 400,000 babies are born in the U.S. by victims of child essay. Note that Jen Soto has gotten herself a lawyer 
So she's no longer talking to the police, from what I understand. This may mean Jen has reason to worry about what she says to the cops, or it could just be her doing what all defense attorneys recommend, and that is to bring in a lawyer, even if you have nothing to hide and you've done nothing wrong. By getting a lawyer, though, is Jen saying that she is a suspect? Is it possible the detectives got her into an interview room at the station and began hammering her? and she maybe then invoked her right to have counsel? Pure speculation, I don't know. But if Jen did invoke that right, then she's not talking. And if she's not talking, then it seems like she doesn't want to help solve what happened to Maddie. Do we have another Candace Bly on our hands? Now I want to share some background information on 37-year-old Stefan Michael Stearns that I found. He was born in April of 1986. He's affiliated with the Republican Party. Party. Not that that's any of our business, but you know I like to spill the tea. His criminal history includes many traffic violations. Starting back in 2004, he had one on August 13th of 2013 when he was 27, in which he was charged with unlawful speeding, an expired temporary tag, failure to obey traffic control device, and failure to yield to oncoming traffic when making a left turn. For all of these, he was either speeding or not following the traffic rules. I don't see anything more serious than traffic violations. But I mean, he does have an extensive list of driving violations. And if the information I dug up is true, it looks like Stearns dabbled in real estate starting in 2013 and ending in 2021. It says he worked for Eco Home Realty Group, LLC, at 13506 Summer Part Village in Windermere, Florida. I also want to talk about Gray Hughes and a guest that he had on his show. I know some people dislike Gray Hughes. Some people absolutely love him. He did an interview with a friend of Stefan's, and this friend goes by the name Josh. Josh claims to have been friends with Stefan for more than 20 years, and I'll leave a link to Gray's channel in the description. This was a phone interview, so we don't see Josh's face. Josh said that he met Stefan at age 16 in his high school computer class in California. Josh and Stefan bonded over their shared hobby of smoking pot when Josh moved to California with his family. Josh and Stefan soon became besties, and when Stefan moved to Florida with his family, after just two weeks, Josh missed Stefan, so he said he decided to go visit him. Stefan introduced Josh to a girl, and Josh then moves to Florida. He moves in with the Stearns family for about six months. I'm always surprised when I hear stories like this, because there's no way my parents would have allowed me to move across the country when I was 16 and move in with another family, but different strokes for different folks. So this was for their senior year. Then Josh goes to Wisconsin where he meets his father with whom he was apparently separated for a period. And then when Josh went back to Florida, he was told by the Stearns parents that he was no longer welcome there because of his drug use. They sent Josh a pack-in back to his dad in Wisconsin. Oh well, yeah, the parents were probably like, we don't want this kid living full-time with us, especially if he's gonna drag Stefan into more trouble than he's already into. So then the friends sort of fell out of touch for a while, and then Josh reached out to Stefan around age 30 to see if Stefan wanted to come work with him at his video game store in Colorado. During the interview, Josh mentioned an incident in which Stefan supposedly used a sharp object, if you know what I mean, to inflict a flesh wound on a man. This happened before Josh met Stefan, apparently. Josh said he believes the story because he said he knows several people who know the story, and one person who was there when it happened. The story goes that a 
drunk guy approached a female that Stefan knew, and Stefan defended this female with a pocket-style sharp object. Josh said back in the day, he and Stefan were not, quote, the good kids. And he also said Stefan was the type who would defend his friends. Josh also talked about glass jar stuff, supposedly that happened when Stefan was 13. Apparently, Stefan told the story himself, and he said that he would put his semen in glass jars and take it to school to impregnate girls? This guy sounds like he was weird way back, way, way, way back. Josh went on to say that he's recently divorced, and in 2022, his ex either told him or tweeted, that Stefan reached out to her and tried to hit on her. Josh said it didn't really upset him because he trusted Stefan and felt that he would be okay around his kids, meaning around Josh's kids. The question is, were Jen and Stefan broken up when he contacted Josh's ex-wife? No one seems to know for sure. Josh says he was in disbelief when he heard the allegations against Stefan, but he realized that once the police said they had video of Madeline on Stefan's phone. He knew it was undeniable. Josh met Madeline briefly, but he didn't really have anything to say about her. He did say that Jen Soto once visited him in Colorado and that she was, quote, unstable. Josh said she would be laughing one minute and joking around, the next minute having to go out to the car so that she could cry her eyes out. He said she's super bipolar and her meds back then weren't right. Josh said he's never known Stefan to lose his temper. He also said that Stefan has always cracked his knuckles. Josh also talked about Stefan's father and mother. Josh said the parents were functional, but not really normal, because he said, what is normal? One time, Stefan's mother got mad, and she backhanded Stefan. The two young men then walked out of the house. The mother yelled for Stefan to come back. He didn't, and the two friends stayed at Josh's house, and his parents allowed him to stay there, and they didn't tell Stefan's parents that he was over there. Again, my parents would never do that. Different strokes. Sky also said that Stefan's parents would yell things at each other in a humorous, playful manner, as in, F you, well, F you sideways, well, F you back, stuff like that. It seemed like harmless banter. He also said that Stefan's mother, quote, is racist and rough around the edges. One time when Stefan was dating a girl with, quote, dark skin, his mom had an issue with it at first, but apparently she got used to it, and this toned down her racism. Apparently she was a drill instructor. Another friend said his mom bought him magazines like Hustler, but Josh said he never witnessed Stefan's mother condoning any of his negative behavior. Josh said he felt it was probably more like Stefan buying himself the magazine. I'm going to end it there today, and I'll share more the next time on Bed Crime Stories.